Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Good to be here in the room in Cambridge. Good to be joined online and in all of our locations. It's a privilege to be able to share and to be able to celebrate Impact Sunday with you. It is Impact Sunday, guys. I know that is something that I get very excited about anyway. And maybe you're thinking, Impact Sunday, huh, what on earth is that? Or maybe you're thinking, Impact Sunday, yes, I get to hear more stories and find out what is going on. Or maybe you're thinking, Impact Sunday, this is where Becky tells me to go and love people again. And you'd be right. Impact Sunday. Impact in its simplest form, in its simplest sense, is the social action, social justice ministry of the C3 Church. It is us impacting our community. It is us going outside of our four walls and finding people who need to know about the love of Jesus and maybe need a little bit of help and support. In its simplest form, it is bridging the gap, sharing the good news and being the hands and feet of Jesus. But in its truest form, it's you and it's me. In its truest form, C3 Impact is you and me. See, impact isn't something that we do. Impact is something we are. Kind of like the church. The church isn't a place where we come. No, the church is who we are every single day. So I guess you could say C3 Impact is the church. It's the church in action. It is the activation of every single one of us. Because the church is the hands and feet of Jesus. So today we are going to take a moment to celebrate. And we are. We're going to celebrate all that we have done. We're going to hear some more stories. We've already Heard and seen Janelle's story. Thank you, Janelle, for sharing your story in Colchester. We're going to hear some more stories. And we're going to ask ourselves some questions this morning. About what does it mean to be somebody who is an active part of the body of Christ. To be the hands and feet of Jesus. I'm going to pray. And I wonder, I know you've all just sat down. And I know you've probably all just sat down in Colchester, Berry Fordham, but could we all just stand to our feet if we're able? Because this morning has the potential to be uh, a challenging morning. This morning has the potential to be a, a change worthy morning of ourselves. But the reality is, for every single one of us, that will only happen if we engage with the Holy Spirit. So this morning, I'm going to ask, and I hope you will join me in asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us this morning. So close your eyes, take a moment, turn your attention to God, and if you're bold enough, just in your heart, repeat these words with me. Holy Spirit, speak to us today. What would you have me do? to be your hands, to love your people. Activate my heart today to love others like you love me. Amen. Amen. Take your seats. All right, we are going to kick it off with some celebration. And so this means that I'm going to share with you some statistics. And some of you in this room are more excited about that than anything else I've said this morning. You are keen to see the stats. And these are statistics from all of our locations, from the Wednesday Hub in Colchester, through to the community lunches in Berry, to Food Truck Friday, to TLG, to Hope Into Action, to all of the things we do across all of our sites. So are you ready for some numbers? Come on. 
total number of meals this year thus far in 2024, we have given out 61,284 meals. That is a huge amount of food. That's just a special shout out to my Food Truck Friday family who have cooked 7,890 of them and given them out on the little yellow food truck outside. That's a huge amount. Some of you worried about the 10 people that are coming around for your lunch later. 7,000 meals, huge amount. Food distributed then. How many kilograms of food have we distributed? We have distributed 89,725 kilograms of food. That's a lot of food. And if you're like me, you have no idea what that actually means. Well, that is the equivalent of 15 African bush elephants. Don't know if that helps at all. Don't know if you know what an African um, bush elephant looks like, but 15 of them have been given out from us. We have helped and seen 562 guests access well-being services in all sorts of different manner, debt, money, employment, mental health, grief, a family breakdown. We have supported 562 guests. We have seen throughout the year 13,757 different touch points of guests throughout the year so far. We have interacted that many times. And I have not personally interacted 13,000 times, but there's a whole host of people who have. And finally, and this one blows my mind, this one is worthy of great praise and celebration. Team C3 have given 8,323 hours to loving people in our communities. An astonishing amount of hours and time. Hey, church, we really are the hands and feet of Jesus. It's important to celebrate the big, but the reality is every single one of those numbers is a one. It's a person. And no matter how much we do, there will always be need continuing to grow across our nation and across our world. There will always be more need. But we have to make sure we bring it into the one. Otherwise, what is it all about? It's encouraging, though. I hope it's encouraging to you. That this week I spent a couple of days away um, in, in a conference about an hour away from here with 36 other churches who do similar stuff to us. And it was a group of people who do social action, social justice within their church. They're working that out for their local churches. 36 churches gathered together. And collectively, all of those churches, we, we kind of give our numbers. We let them know what's going on in our little spot of the world, what's happening where we are. And we add them all up and we find out what the impact is across the whole of the UK. So I thought I would share with you the impact. So we are just a drop in a great big ocean of making a huge impact for Jesus. Because all of those churches together have given out 6.5 million meals. Wow. 96,000 volunteers across all of those churches. 5,200 people supported with debt and 87,000 people in community programs across the churches of UK. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. That is not just us in our corner of the world trying to make a difference. No, we are in this together. The church, Big C, is having a huge impact. And every single one of those numbers is a person. Every single one of those numbers is as an individual known by God. And so I'd like to take a moment to share with you an incredible individual's story. 
to share with you an individual who is a part of those big numbers, but is also somebody whose name is known and whose name I would like to share with you this morning. So we are going to watch her story. Now, similar to Janelle, there are things in her story that are painful, painful for her and maybe painful for you to hear. So I'd encourage you, if anything this morning from anything we share triggers you in any way, causes you any distress, please reach out, chat to someone, take yourself to a place where it's safe, or come and receive prayer. But can we please give a big encouragement to Alicia as we hear her story? Hey everyone, Kara here from the Cambridge Impact location. I am here with Alicia. We're just going to chat a little bit about what God's been doing um, in the past couple of years. So thank you for meeting with me today. Thank you. Um, I just want to hear a little bit about um, early years, Alicia. Tell me a little bit about yourself, kind of before the girls, young Alicia. Um, okay, so I've been raised in Poland. Mm -hmm. Um, had a very rocky childhood. Mm. Um, a lot of ups and downs. And then I moved when I was 18 to Jersey, Channel Islands. Mm. And from there I moved to UK. Yeah, to Cambridge specifically? or Yes. Yeah, to Cambridge. So, um, I was removed from my home when I was 16 and I went to the orphanage. Okay. Uh, but before I got there, I was homeless at 16, um, sleeping when I was working, pretending I'm 18. And then I was doing my A-levels mm. at the same time and working night shifts and doing my levels and it was too much. So a week before my A-levels, I uh, moved to Jersey uh, to... I guess to survive. And now I am uh, at Anglia Araskin University studying criminology and psychology. Which is crazy. Like, how did you come into criminology and psychology? What was the desire to study that in particular? So I was abused as a child a lot. And um, I always find myself in a position of protecting my sister, mm -hmm. protecting children in the orphanage. I was always scared of rejection. I never felt love. I didn't know what it was really. So, mm -hmm. um, as a as a way of protecting myself, I guess. I never hoped for someone to love me, but instead I focus on loving children hmm. who probably going through the same thing, thinking they will not be loved. When I see suffering children um, or domestic violence at home, hmm. um, I feel so strong mm -hmm. to, to go and help. Yeah. I really do. I want to talk about your first interaction with Becky <laughs> and tell that story because I think it's so funny. Um, so I moved to a um, new location mm -hmm. um, and I have been in a very bad mental state. Mm. It was so many changes going on, a lot of on my head. Yeah, I didn't trust people. I didn't, I was scared of people. I was scared of talking with people, meeting new people, putting faith in them. Mm. When I moved to my new house, um, all the driveway was very muddy and icy. Um, so I couldn't park my car there because I couldn't get out. So I, park, stuck. so I parked at the church <laughs> and I just kept my car here at the car park. And um, one day someone knocked on my door it was Becky. She asked me if um, if that's my car. I said yes, and I was very. I put a wall straight away. Hmm. I put a wall, like I'm gonna fight it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fight it to keep my car 
right <laughs> <at> the church <laughs> because I am not dealing with it anymore. I can't deal yeah. with this car right Another now. thing. Yeah. Another thing. No, mm. I just, I'm, I can't, I didn't have money to fix my driveway. I was pretty sure her response will be... She gonna fight you. She will fight me back. Yeah. <laughs> And I was ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> You're ready to fight. Like, like, I'm going to fight because I've got nothing else to lose. Yeah. Like, I was yeah. so done with life. Yeah. Um, and that's the response you were expecting. And her response was kindness. Yeah. I went speechless. Mm -hmm. I haven't met a human being who been so thoughtful yeah. to a stranger mm -hmm. straight away. Yeah. Without asking a question. Who are you? Hmm. And um, um, she said, how can I help you hmm. so you can park at your home? And she had no idea who I am, what I'm going through. I, I went silent and then I started crying when she left because it was something new. Yeah. And something I needed so much and something I haven't experienced for a very long time. So in between then and you've recently been baptized, talk a little bit about what happened. How long was it in between that? Was it like a year and a half or? I think it's around a year and a half. Because I've seen you around, like you were around, you came to Christmas stuff. Yeah, I've seen you around, but I guess I want to just hear a bit about that process mm -hmm. internally or what was going on. So I think um, looking back now, it's a beautiful journey to God. Yeah. And it takes time and yeah. patience and yeah. it requires time. And, you know, you hear people saying, I love God and glorify God and speak about him and uh, put so much trust and faith in him. And for someone who had a religion as a subject at school and been raised in a Catholic family. However, it was more like a story in a book mm. yeah. of Adam and Eve or Ark. Mm -hmm. You don't really feel it. So then in one service, I was sitting in the church, crumbling in pain. It was, um, I couldn't bear the pain anymore. I got to the point where I just couldn't bear it anymore. And um, yeah. Jesus was sitting right there next to me. He's <laughs> like, hi. And um, he, I was, it was an amazing experience. I was like, I was in such a pain. Mm. I was crying so much. I was, I felt almost like I was loving this pain in me. I, mm. You know, like, yeah, like taking care of this pain. Yeah, yeah addicted Nurturing to it. it. Yes. And you're like, why am I and doing that? And I was that? crying and I was in pain but I wouldn't let go and he was sitting there and he was just looking at me as like, I felt him, I felt so embarrassed because I had a feeling he's right there next to me and I couldn't even look. I'm definitely more challenged. Mm. I found myself more challenged before it was easy because I could choose the easy way yeah. to protect myself and that's it. And now I have to challenge myself. Mm. I, guess, I guess I am, I got more courage. Mm. I'm definitely braver. Yeah. I started trusting people. Mm. I know they can hurt me. It's it's just okay. Mm. But I want to trust them. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia, for sharing a part, just a snippet of your story with us. And I didn't show you that story. If you're wondering, the Becky involved in that story is me. <laughs> and I didn't show you it to, to show you about me and what I did that day. To be quite honest with you, I was also ready to fight a little bit. <laughs> I was frustrated, I was annoyed. And there was a moment when she opened the door where I felt that it was no longer me getting involved, it was the Holy Spirit. 
And so no credit in all honesty can be given to me in that moment because it was the Holy Spirit who gave me words to speak. It was the Holy Spirit who, who convicted me and asked me to ask the question, how can I help? And I didn't wake up that morning intending to, to go and have that conversation. But there was a moment where he stopped me and he got involved and then I could show his love. And sometimes you have to get out of the way and let God get involved because God used me that day and he wants to use you too. He has a desire to use you too every single day. You know, at the gathering we were just at with these 36 other churches, we did all sorts of different things. And one of the things that we went round and did is we had to put a sticky note up of three different things that were our biggest challenge in this year coming up around this topic of social justice and social action. And the majority of churches in their top three biggest challenges, do you know what they said? Their biggest challenge, one of them, was to envision the local church to love their community, to understand that social justice is not something for a subset of passionate Christians, but it is something that is fundamental to our faith. That is something that we have all been asked to do. Not just to cheer others on. Not just to feel good that I go to a church that does it. Not just to donate or to sponsor a hamper, but to do it because it's part of who we are. James 1, 27, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Now, does that mean every single person in every single location should join Team Impact and start doing all things Impact? No, it doesn't. It might mean that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. You know, what it does mean is you be you and love people. You show up and ask the Holy Spirit, what would he have you do? You just ask and receive and follow and be guided by the prompting because it's the Holy Spirit that's the activation in each and every one of us. Be intentional. Pray the uncomfortable prayers. An uncomfortable prayer to pray might be, whose door should I knock on? Metaphorically or physically? Do you know your neighbor? Whose door should I knock on? Another bold prayer to pray, only pray it if you're ready for it, is Lord, inconvenience me for you today. Or that one will get you. Inconvenience me today for you. I love the way Romans puts it. Romans 12 verse 13, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Get practicing. You're not going to be good right away. Get practicing. Or the way the message translation version puts it, help needy Christians and be inventive in hospitality. I am an ideas person and I'm sorry for anyone who has to work with me because I have idea after idea after idea. And so I could give you all the ideas in the world. I could tell you story after story of sitting in groups of young people and deciding that we're going to write letters and we're going to drop a finger on the iPhone maps and find an address to send it to. And we did that and how that letter turned up in somebody's house who just so happened to be the estranged father of a girl sat in the room, in my living room, who wrote the letter. I could tell you story after story of being inventive in hospitality, of posting sweets in post boxes and f- going through all the different lockers in schools and putting in notes and all sorts of things. But you don't need my ideas. You need ideas from the Holy Spirit. 
And you're never going to get the ideas from the Holy Spirit unless you ask. Ask the Holy Spirit. Lord, what would you have me do? God, whose door do I need to knock on? Because as soon as we take that step, guess who gets involved? The Holy Spirit. He takes over. Now let me be clear. Alicia's story is amazing. I am incredibly grateful for God that that is continuing story right now. She's not in the room right now. Right now she's cooking food in the kitchen. It's incredible, her story and how it's unfolded. But we are here as Christians, as C3 Church, to do good, full stop. We are here to show up and to love people, full stop. No strings attached. So it doesn't matter what that person responds with. It doesn't matter if that person ever comes and be a a part of us on a Sunday morning. It doesn't matter as long as I've done my bit and my bit is to love them. Their response is their responsibility. How they respond to that is all up to them. I am here to do good full stop. I had no intention on that day to knock on Alicia's door and to enter that conversation. During the conversation there, I somehow ended up agreeing to do her driveway. As I was saying the words, I thought, I have no idea how to do one's driveway. I don't know who's going to help me do this driveway. I'm not really sure how, where the money's coming from to do this driveway. But the Holy Spirit prompted me to say something. And do you know what was really cool about that? was a whole group of young adults showed up. And thankfully, Ed, who knows what he's doing around building a driveway. And they showed up, and they put their hands together. And that was an opportunity together that we got. Why? Because the Holy Spirit activated something. And by activating in something in me, and it wasn't about me, it allowed others to be activated. It allowed others to use their skills, their gifts, their talents, their time, their treasure to be able to impact and be a part of somebody else's story. When you get activated, the person next to you gets activated, and we become the church together being active. So Lord, what would you have me do? What are the justice issues around me? How can I be inconvenienced? I'm sure if you ask God those questions, he'll answer. He'll give you the situations. He'll give you the opportunities. He'll give you the prompts to be able to respond. But there may be another group of people listening this morning, either in the room or online, in prisons, wherever this may find you. And that might be that maybe you don't need to be the one knocking on other people's doors. Maybe this morning you're the one who needs to open the door and find someone on the other side of that door. And that could be for two reasons. That could be that maybe today, this morning, you need to open your door and receive some help from other people. Or that might be this morning you need to open the door to Jesus, who's knocking on every single one of our doors, waiting to be invited in. Matthew 7, 7, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Maybe it is time for you to open the door to Jesus and to let him in. Because just as Alicia said, he sat right next to you. He's waiting to be invited in and for you to let him in. So, C3 Impact 2024. This year, just know that you're included. Just know that you're a part of it. Just know that there's an activation. I don't know if you're like me and love to mix bicarbonate soda and vinegar to make some kind of cleaning substance. You know, the vinegar on its own is useless. 
And the bicarbonate on his own is useless for that purpose. But when you bring them together, there's an activation. And this morning I had a picture of almost like if we're just a big pool of vinegar, thankfully we don't smell like that. If we're just a big pool of vinegar, that this Holy Spirit is pouring over us bicarbonate of soda. Because as soon as you mix a little bit of bicarbonate of soda, that vinegar fizzes up. And as soon as you mix a little bit of Holy Spirit into our day, into our prayers, into our attention, we fizz up. We pour over. We overflow. It can't be contained in the container anymore. It spreads out. And so my prayer for each and every one of us this morning is that we would be intentional about mixing the Holy Spirit with our intention, the vinegar with the bicarbonate of soda, and that we would bubble up and we would pour out and we would no longer contain ourselves to our comfortable world, but we would go and we would be spread out everywhere. Why? Because we're the church. We're the hands and feet of Jesus. He asked us to do it and guess what? He goes with us. We're a part of something bigger, you and me. Ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do? Whose door do I need to open? Maybe today's the day things got a little bit more inconvenient. And maybe today's the day where you get activated. Wherever you are in any location, stand to your feet with me this morning. We started by in prayer, asking the Lord, would He soften our hearts? Would He challenge us? Would He change us? Would He grow us this morning? And maybe we end this morning, I hope, with that prayer being answered. And so I have a question and answer it whichever location you're in. This morning, church, are you ready to be activated? Are you ready to be activated? Colchester, are you ready to be activated? Are we ready to be activated this morning? Pray with me one more time. Hands out. And say these words with me if you feel so inclined. It's a bold prayer. And it's simply this. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. To love your people. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an update, and feel free to leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you.